Today on Devils in the Details, we have Colleen Jennings Rogensock joining us. She is the Vice President for Cultural Affairs at ASU, as well as the Executive Director of ASU's Gamage Theater. Uh, we all know that it has been tough during the pandemic. It has been extremely tough on our arts community. So Colleen, to kick it off today, I would like to talk to you a little bit about, it's been a strange nine months for everybody, but I think it's been particularly difficult for the performing arts because it's, it's hard to social distance. Uh, the arts is about coming together. How is Gamage coping with the cancellations that have taken place over the last nine months and postponements uh, while still trying to keep connected with the arts community? You know, Annie, who would have thought that childhood game we learned to play called hopscotch would come into play as we are adults? And really, beginning in March, when everything began to shut down, we just began hopscotching shows and hopscotching performances and saying, okay, we're going to take this performance and we're going to move it to June. And now we're going to hopscotch it again to July. And now we're going to hopscotch again to October. Well, here we are in December and we are still moving things around. Art and culture, really, we are the second responders. Like we have first responders who are taking care of our health needs and our food needs, but our spiritual needs are being taken care of by art and culture. So this has been a very difficult time. It's a very difficult time on Broadway where much of our work comes from. And we have been doing everything from not only hopscotching events, but talking about how do you do work in a bubble and take the whole creative team and a cast and put them in a hotel and then still put it on the stage and then stream it live. How do we do that? We've been talking about how do we stay in contact with all of our communities. And as you know, ASU Gamage's mission is connecting communities. So I do a lot of town halls, listening to people, telling people what I know about the road and where artists are coming from and what artists are doing. We also have been so desperately working on having artists be employed. So one of the things we have attempted to do during that time at ASU Gamage is we've done a series of things. We do a program called Gather, which are stories told by leaders and various individuals in our community about life under this pandemic of COVID, about life under the second pandemic, which is institutional racism, which we are all dealing with, about school, K through 12. We do a lot of shows with home artists or local artists and they teach in the classroom. So teachers have a variety of things to share with their students. And then we do live performances. We have a program called Each Measure where we work with our ASU students in the Herberger Institute for Design and the Arts and they get a half hour to talk about their creative process, whether they are composers or dancers or theater makers or visual artists. And it gives them a chance as a young artist to talk about their work. It's, it's live on Facebook Live. People respond and they can respond to questions. You know, one of the things with the COVID pandemic that's really tough is a lot of our recent ASU grads who went to New York to find their fame and fortune and found it, all of a sudden had it shut down. So we're dealing with those things, but we're also dealing with some larger global issues as well. I sit on it with a group called the International Presenters Group, and a lot of cultural diplomacy has been done with artists we have brought here, like Sanka Juku, or artists we've brought over, Peter Reeder from the UK. Well, with COVID and the border shutdown, that isn't happening. So we feel that there's a distance from America and the rest of the world in terms of work. The theaters to me, this is my church and my religion. And so we worship together, we sit side by side. So the notion of that happening is, is what we're striving towards. So in Australia, they opened Frozen, Come From Away, Pippin and uh, Hamilton. And they've managed to do it because they've got the COVID you know, under wraps. We are very buoyed by what Dr. Fauci has told us. And in the Broadway group that I work with, Dr. Fauci spoke for about 15 minutes. He's actually going to be the keynote speaker at the Association of Performing Arts Professionals in January, a conference that will be virtual. And 
generally 4,000 people are there. But we talked about our plans of looking at how we reopen the theater, how we do the Swiss cheese approach, which you've probably read about, that we will do non, we will do non pharma, so we will have masks. We will look at what the filtration system is like in the theater. We will clean, we will do the ionized cleaning. We will work with UV rays. And we will also do prepackaged foods and things of that nature. We will test, we will trace, and with the vaccine coming along, that gives us great hope that we again will be seated side by side in the theater watching live work happen. For 35 years, you have been in the performing arts community. So yes. 2020 is certainly a, a very interesting year, but for you, you have seen so much massive change happen over the last 35 years. It's interesting, though, that you brought up two things I think are, are fascinating. One is that the, what's happening in the theater, the push for diversity in the theater, is a push that we are seeing um, and a conversation that has come to the forefront in a way that perhaps I think many haven't seen in quite a long time, probably since the civil rights movement. Yes. What is ASU doing specifically in that space, and how are you working to integrate that conversation into the every day of damage, even as we navigate the confusion and hopscotching of COVID-19. Well, I will tell you, I am one of two leaders who are leading President Crow's Advisory Council on African and African American Affairs. Jeffrey, Dr. Jeffrey Wilson and myself. We have a council of 22 that President Crow has appointed, and then we have subcommittees for a 25-point plan. And so that plan includes issues for faculty, black faculty, black staff, and black students. So we have been hard at work since the beginning of October and our appointments go till the end of July, looking at everything from a multicultural center to um, tenure and, and black faculty to black staff being able to mentor and, and be encouraged to do that work and mentor young undergraduate and graduate students coming into, into the institution. We also look at and always have at ASU Gamage, our mission again, as I've said, is connecting communities. It's communities plural. So we have always looked at a diversity of communities. And in the work that we are doing, live stream work in Beams and some others, we have been highlighting in particular artists of color, both students and community. So we continue to look at that work and we continue to look at how people not only make work and do casting, but how the very art of production's been done. And I've, recently I've been working with the Industry Standard Group, and it's a group of young BIPOC producers getting ready to make their mark. So we have been very dedicated to that. I have a diverse staff, which we have worked very hard on doing. And one thing that's very important, and I would leave this with all of our listeners, is that it is, it is amazing that ASU has our charter, our ASU charter, and we are judged by whom we include and how people exceed when they have been included. And really, we are setting standards and models for other universities and institutions to follow us. I think that tying that back into the ASU charter of we are truly judged on who we include and not by who we exclude, I think yes. that is such a fascinating way to look at this. And you talked a lot about how uh, the anti-racism is something that not only needs to be looked at from an institutional level, but also has to be a personal mission. It has to be personal something that you mission. are taking on in, in your yes. uh, personal every day. Now, also one of the things I think that 2020 has allowed us is to really take a step back from, in theater, you are constantly go, 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 go. Um, and 2020 has forced you to really step back and, and look at these bigger discussions that perhaps maybe were always on the back burner. Uh, but you do have a very, very well laid out plan as what the return to theater looks like. Can you tell me about what the return to the stage campaign is at Gamage? Yes, absolutely. One of the things that people should know is that a theater is a living, breathing creature. So there are so many things that this creature needs. And as we prepare for our COVID protocols, as we prepare for training the staff on those COVID protocols, as we prepare to reopen the theater, things need to be done. And so there's a series of things that involve training and staff that involve 
how we prepare for a crew to come back again, how we prepare for artists to come back into the theater. That's what returning to the stage is going to do for us. Even the notion of ticketless systems, you know, people go, oh, even the notion of ticketless programs. So we're not just looking at, you know, so we're not going to hand you a piece of paper anymore that someone has touched and done that. You're going to be able to pick it up on yourself. So return to the stages are going to be about those things. And also the fact that for us, our ASU Gamage Broadway series has been the big financial support for the institution. ASU Gamage does not receive funding from the university. So we are a tub on its own bottom, and that tub was heavily supported by Broadway. So we need to shore those funds up again so that we will be ready to open so that we can also look at supporting the work of Beyond. And our Beyond series is where we have diversity. The kinds of work that we look at with Beyond, that's not money-making work. That's integration into the community work. Broadway, until we have Broadway back up again and running, we'll be looking at the finances to do that and to support the theater. Colleen, I could talk to you, I could tell for hours and hours and hours. We have so, so much more to talk about, Annie. There is, and what I think it is, is that theater really is a microcosm of the world at large. The, the conversations about diversity, the conversations about safety, the conversations about togetherness are yes. conversations because the theater is a reflection of our society at large. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, for those of you who are looking towards the Gamage next season, which I know I am and so many of my ASU peers are, please check out their website, see the amazing uh, different pursuits that are happening in that. Colleen, thank you again for joining us on Devils in the Details today. Thank you so much. And I always say, go Devils. Go Devils. <laughs>